About 20 years ago, it was going back 20 years, I was actually working in a full-time job in a magazine publishing company. And then suddenly out of the blue, I was made redundant. And I thought, crikey, what the heck am I going to do now? And I decided I'd set up my own business. Well, I adored personal development and helping people move forward in life and studying in that area. So I set up a mail order business in personal growth and grew that business to quite a good size and very successful. But five years ago, I got incredibly sick. And I was so sick, I had to close the business down. And what we did, my wife and I said, well, let's start all over again. We will close up shop, we will sell the house, and we'll move overseas, new life. So we moved over to Abu Dhabi. So Abu Dhabi is an hour, well, where we were in Abu Dhabi, is an hour and a half south of Dubai. So to give you an idea where it was. Start all over again. And my wife was working in teaching, Greg's superb job in teaching. The children were in a wonderful school. Like, what would I do? And I thought I was going to be the resident counselor and therapist for the expat community in the town. I'd done some psychotherapy training earlier, some other counselling courses, and worked with people over the years. But I'd not worked with people on long term. So here I was, and I was working mostly with women, because there were an awful lot of women. But equally, it was the women that really wanted to move forward with their lives. And what I noticed was that they were very unhappy in their lives. They weren't getting the connections they wanted. They were very lonely. They had friends or husbands, children, but they weren't connecting with them. And they were very upset about that. And my job was to support them to do that. And then a year ago, a year and a half ago, my wife and I split up and I moved back to the UK. So I suddenly thought, well, I'm a northerner. And I need to set up a new business. Do I go north where my friends are or go south where potentially good business is? So I moved south. So I'm very new to the south of England. So here I was in a new environment. Near my where my parents were and brothers and sister. But I needed to like, make friendships and eventually create a relationship. And what has been fascinating is trying dating and making new friends and realizing the challenge of doing that and the wariness that I find with people that I meet, that it takes a lot of time to create a friendship. And when I'm with, sometimes, with another woman, it's like there's a fear, there's a trepidation, there's a lack of trust, a lack of playfulness. And I want to engage. And they're not really that interested in what I have to say because they're a bit scared. And I'm thinking, so I would say there's something going on here. And I call it a crisis of intimacy. I think that. We've lost something in the modern times. And I think what why well, define intimacy is warmth, affection, trust, togetherness, and companionship. This is what we're looking for with our loved ones in our family. And yet, what happens is we have a media which creates drama. It creates an us and them situation, black and white goodies and baddies. It needs to do that in some respects. We need the drama because, you know, it's only the dramatic bits that make us pick up a newspaper and buy it as we're going to work. Or when we were entertained on, entertained on TV, we want the drama because general life is pretty nice. You know, like people are really getting on, husbands and wives getting on. It's not that exciting television, whereas the real conflict really does. But the problem is that it's very much exaggeration, what you were talking about, Elizabeth. Now, I think we pay a very high price for this. And I think the price that we pay is, it, if you actually look at family breakdowns now, family breakdowns are now costing this country 46 billion pounds a year, which is significant. There are people now, there are more people single, living on their own than ever before. It's a third of households in the UK now, where it's a one person living on their own. The amount of stress that people are experiencing, nearly half the people in this country consider themselves very stressed. 27% of people in the UK are chronically stressed on the border of collapse. You think, wow, that is awesome. And birth rates are going down, you know, which isn't helpful for the population, what it's going to cost us. And this is what it's like, I think. This is uh, me here. And this is my cleaner yesterday. I said, I said to my cleaner, I said, 
would you come to bed with me? And she said, yes, willingly. So she sat in bed with me to play at the, for this shot. That we sit at home, you know, addicted to Facebook, and then we have this iPad culture where, you know, each person's on their phone or on Facebook or whatever, and somehow or other, you know, we're going to tap our pattern and say, how about it, love? You know, and it's not going to happen in this kind of culture. But she said, my boyfriend trusts me completely, so I'm very happy to get into bed with you. And so, and you can mention my name. So that's Lindsay. And I think what we end up with is this ticking time bomb. We, we, we end up with these bombshells that people come, it's like our partners come up to us and say, I want to end the relationship. Or you've ever said to somebody else, I want this relationship to end, suddenly out of the blue, boom. There's something going on that there's that not communication that's not happening that suddenly out of the blue, a relationship ends. Equally, maybe you have, as I have been 20 years ago, suddenly being confronted by a board that said, we want you out of here, we don't want you anymore. Well, where did that come from? It comes out of nowhere, but it doesn't come out of a dialogue, an interaction. And I think one of the reasons that this actually happens is we're homo sapiens. We've been here on this planet for 60,000 years, which isn't very long. You know, and in 60,000 years, we've gone from very small villages, you know, to this very complicated environment with all this technology, you know. And what we're considered to be as human beings is that evolutionarily we're designed to be good at four things that are called the four Fs. And mammals are the same. And the first F is fighting. We're good at fighting. We need to fight to survive in the wilderness out there. The second F is flee. We need to be able to flee danger. The third F is feed. So we need to be able to find feed and grab food when it's available because it might not be around next time. And the fourth F is reproduction. So those are what we're driven by. So what's going on? Why are we in this mess? And I think that we've got this very complicated environment, but we're not really taught at school how to really communicate. It seems like we're taught how to speak English, if that's our native language, but how do we really communicate with our partners to say, you know, to discuss what's going on and say, I'm not comfortable about what's going on, I'd like to talk to you about it. <coughs> Instead, what happens is there's conflict. So I think what we need to do is this, what I call a four-step process. And I think what we need to do to move forward is, firstly, is we need to stop. We need to put aside our mobile phones and our tablets lay them aside, switch off the computer, turn off the television, and then we can sit and then think, and then I think and I said, listen to myself. So we listen to ourselves and say, what is it that's going on for me right now? Am I happy with where I am in the world? You know, what is it that I want in my life? And what's not working right now? So in that moment, I get to contemplate and think with all, and get rid of all that noise that's in the way, because often, People don't have time to think because there's always the next thing. And the other thing, part of it is to listen. We're listening to ourselves, we listen to the answer, the voice inside that answers those questions. But equally, we need to listen to our partners, to our families, and to our colleagues. But to not just to listen, but to really listen, to get a real deep connection. You know, where we're actually really listening in and paying attention rather than wondering what I'm going to say next in response, waiting for my turn to jump in. I think the second thing we need to do is to get real. And I don't know if you know oops, this image. So it's from the YouTube video called David After Dentist. How many of you have seen David After Dentist? Oh, about a quarter of you. So this is a young boy who's sitting in the back of his car and his dad is filming him and he's just had an injection, he's just come out of had a dental treatment. And he's completely groggy in the anaesthetic and he says, Daddy, is this real life? <laughs> and of course the, the father laughs because of course he can't contemplate, this boy can't work out what's going on. And I think what's going on in our lives is when we look at the newspapers, we, we're, we're saying, is this real life? You know, what we're seeing in the newspapers, all the fighting and the conflict, is it really true though? that politicians are 
completely untrustworthy. We, surely we can trust some of them. You know, we've fallen out with the clergy, you know, that there's somehow we consider them, you know, there's, there's, an, there's an element that are significant element that have problems. And there's other elements of a society where we're judging people and tiring them all with the same brush. And we're doing that. So we need to get real equally about the fantasies. Elizabeth talked about fantasies. We have the fantasy of the happy ever after. And that isn't real life. You know, I love romantic films like everybody. And I'm very touched and moved by movies like Pretty Woman. But equally, I've got to realize that <coughs> this isn't real life. You know, life is challenges. And I have clients that say to me, Chris, you know, what I want is a life without problems. And I'm thinking, well, <laughs> crikey, that's just not going to happen. You know, it just <laughs> isn't. You know, life is challenging. We have this fantasy of, you know, these celebrities that just seem to have everything working perfectly. And we forget that they have their own challenge in the background. You know, it's like, you know, okay, we'd like to win the lottery, you know, and win a million pounds. Well, that just creates another set of problems, you know, so we're not getting real. I think the other thing is there's an elephant in the room in any environment. It's like, you know, an elephant in the room is where I'm in the room with my partner or a friend or a colleague, and there's this enormous elephant, and we're going to talk about everything but not the elephant. And we have in our relationships, there's things going on that are not being discussed, you know. I mean, as a friend of mine recently, she said her partners had a, an affair, you know, they had a one night stand. And there's, there's stuff that's not being discussed. And it's throwing all kinds of nonsense up, but it's not really being addressed and it causes problems. It's not really being discussed properly. And we need to get real and have real conversations that matter. And I think the thirdly of my four points is we need to take risks. Life is risky, you know. You know, it, you know somebody said, I forget who it was, which was life is either, a, as Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And it's very easy if we're single to stay at home and not reach out. It's either to go on dates and be very wary and not really reveal ourselves and not take a chance with people. Equally, in a relationship, we don't take risks with our partner and say, look, I, something's not quite going on, on here. I need to talk to you. I need to resolve things. You know, I feel uncomfortable. I feel scared for our future. Let's talk. You know, instead, what we've been doing is fighting. You know, it makes sense. And equally, we need to take risks and say, you know, what are our boundaries? Is this relationship something I need to put, a, put my foot down and say, I'm not prepared for you to come home any more drunk? like this three nights a week. Things need to move on. <laughs> Equally, there's some relationships that need to end. You know, it's like, you know, come on, you know, you're going to take a risk. You know, yes, the relationship's not working. Time to move on and create a new relationship. That's going to be scary. That's very risky to end a relationship and to start a new one. But my God, you know, it's far better than stuck in some humdrum relationship that's not working. And that requires risks. I mean, I learned something for, I did improv this year. I went to some three lots of improv workshops and learned some great things about taking risks and really listening to the other person, really engaging, being playful, and through spontaneity, in the moment, you can create funny little skits which people laugh at or are very entertained and amused by. And I think the fourth point is to have very high expectations. When I was going through some problems in my relationship a number of years ago, I was talking to a mate of mine, and he was a, an MBA graduate, very, very smart guy, and he said, Chris, let me tell you, lower your expectations. You know, I know you're going through problems, but lower your expectations. Because then, when things get a little bit better, you'll be thrilled. And I thought, you know, that seemed reasonable advice, and I've spoken to some of our friends, and they said, yeah, that seems to make sense. Except the research on relationships shows that that's not what works. We need to have very high expectations for our relationships. The people who have very high expectations for our relationships are the ones that have great relationships. And I think we need to aim for the bullseye. Because we, if we aim for the bullseye, if we miss the bullseye, we get very close. If we have lower expectations, who knows where the arrow is going to go? So high expectations, because we deserve an awesome relationship. We deserve awesome relationships with our families, with our friends, with our partners. We deserve that. So here are my four points. Stop and listen. 
get real, take risks and have very high expectations. And I think when you do that, life becomes very wonderful. And I think what happens is it leads to a new set of four Fs. And instead of fighting, I think what happens instead is that we actually forgive the person we're with. Not in the sense of letting them off the hook, but there's a sense of togetherness that we can work something out together. And that creates a level of familiarity between us. And I think the second F, instead of fleeing, which is what we do as animals, flee from danger, flee from confrontation, what we do is we actually face our challenges, face what's in front of us. And the third F is to feed. It's about feeding. And instead, what we normally do is voraciously grab at food, voraciously devour information. And instead of devouring information, we, we should choose wisely what we eat. We go on a media diet. We don't consume quite as much of the nonsense that we see in the newspapers. We're more selective in what we consume. And I think the fourth F, for me, it's about really creating a real freedom and affinity and a real perfection for people. And when we do that, we have that, we also create a lot of fun in our lives. And a lot of fun leads to a relationship, when, and that's like the reproduction side, which is actually much more tender. It's more heart-centered, it's more together. And that's what I recommend for us all. <laughs>